Hi everyone and welcome to a very special edition of RIT Sports Zone. I'm Kevin Roach. And I'm Sylvie Shalasi and today SC is coming to you from Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan, home of the 2010 Frozen Four. Sophie, who would have thought? Way back in October, the Tigers start the season 0-5 and they end up here at the Frozen Four in Detroit with a shot at a national championship. Well, the road to the Frozen Four began close to home at the East Regionals in Albany, where first up for RIT was a date with Denver, the second ranked team in the nation. The RIT faithful made the short trip down the thruway to support their Tigers in their first NCAA appearance, and RIT jumped on the Pioneers early. Just five minutes in, Chris Tanev with the wrister to give the Tigers a 1-0 lead. Jared DeMichael was spectacular in the net for RIT. The senior goaltender made 39 saves as RIT shocked Denver 2-1. DeMichael's 39 saves were a career best for him against the Pioneers. The Tigers were also led by Cameron Burt, who scored his 16th goal on the year. You've got to be self-motivated to play at this time of year. and. Um... You know, I thought we did a good job of, uh, when I say hanging in there, I thought we played with a lot of poise. We didn't give up a lot of great opportunities, even though they were throwing great pressure on us. And uh, I just thought it was, uh, there was a sense of calmness on the bench and on the ice for us in, in general. And I think, you know, versus 20 guys on, or 15 guys on the bench yelling at the five guys what to do, do this, do that, there was, we just let them play and they played. So RIT advanced to the East Regional Final, where New Hampshire was awaiting the Tigers. But RIT would not be denied. Tied at one in the second period, the Tigers exploded offensively. Tyler Brenner with the great move in front for the goal to give RIT a 2-1 lead. But they were just getting started because just 13 seconds later, Brent Alexin denied, but he gets his own rebound and puts it in. It was 3-1. RIT. The game clincher came over a minute later. The Tigers get the pressure in front again, and Steven Maddock puts it home. The Tigers score three times in a span of one minute and 35 seconds, and RIT can celebrate as they advance to their first Frozen Four in school history. Jared DeMichael was outstanding once again, stopping 63 of 66 shots he faced in the regionals. He was also named most outstanding player as the Tigers extended the nation's longest winning streak to 12. Um, I think everybody was uh, knew we were the big underdog in this. Didn't have much faith in us, but um, we were able to play hard and come together as a team and prove them all wrong. The 30 guys in the dressing room definitely believed it, and you know we expected to win, and and we still expect to win. And um, you know a lot of the outsiders maybe didn't give us much of a chance, but um, we just take that in stride and accept it for what it is, and still go out there and approach the game the same way. Back in Rochester, Tiger fans were thrilled to see their team in the NCAAs for the very first time. Many hoped that RIT would be competitive when they got to Albany, but very few can say they ever expected to see the team make it all the way to the Frozen Four. As Shelby Hill explains, the Tiger bandwagon got a whole lot bigger in the span of a weekend. Many Tiger fans were lucky enough to make the trip to Albany for East Regionals, but some had no other choice than to stay behind and watch at home. So, first of all, why didn't you guys go to Albany today? I had an exam that ended at 3 o'clock today, so I basically ran for my exam to get here. I wanted to be there. I've been in the corner crew since the beginning of the year. This is my first year at RIT, so really bummed I couldn't be there, but had to be here for the game. I had class 2-3, to 3-4, three, three to four, but we convinced our professor to cancel our EM Fields class so we can come watch the game at the Ritz. So all of us got together and we started yelling at him, can you please go watch the game? He's like, fine, class is canceled. So why was it that important to you to come watch this game? Man, I watched the games during the regular season, and we finally made it to the uh, championship, and now we're going to make it to the Final Four, and we're going to win. Hundreds of fans, including President Dessler, packed the Ritz to catch a glimpse of the Tigers on the national stage. I mean, a lot of students can't make the trip for various reasons, and I think that uh, not only that, the price is a lot cheaper here. If you can't afford a ticket, you can come here and watch for free. And I understand we have another site on campus elsewhere where you can watch, and a couple of the other local establishments, I guess uh, uh, Riley's Pub and so forth, is also has a, a group going, and there's one downtown, so we've got uh, RIT spirit all over town today. For RIT, has always been a fantastic and fun sport, uh, and a funny event at RIT, but ever since the move to Division I, uh, the growth of the program has just simply increased the amount of school spirit and the amount of students who come out to these events. Um, they've always had a packed house, but 
now we have a packed house, but everyone's packed with their orange. They got their brown on. Um, the excitement and the level of spirit has, has intensified immensely. So it's been it's been nothing but fantastic since RIT's moved to Division One. School spirit only intensified over the weekend as fans watched their Tigers reach the Frozen Four. The celebration started at TC Riley's and ended at the Sentinel in the wee hours of the morning as the team received a hero's welcome back to campus. It's about as exciting as it could possibly get, you know. For RIT in its fifth year as a Division I team to accomplish this feat is almost unbelievable. I think we are so proud of these players, but not just for how, you know, how well they played, but for how well they represent us. And I don't, I don't think you can ever hope for more than this. Hey, hey, we've had uh, unbelievable support from our administration, the fans. And we've got good kids, so I think that's a good uh, recipe for success. I mean, unbelievable. Look around. It's just unreal. The fan support here has been unbelievable my full, whole four years. And just to go out on this note is unreal, and we're just so excited. It's awesome. Welcome back to Sports Zone from the Frozen Four here in Detroit. There were 12 days in between the regionals and the Tigers national semifinal matchup with Wisconsin. They had time to rest, refocus, and admittedly time to let their head shrink a little bit. But as Shelby Hill reports, before departing for Detroit, the Tigers were sent off with a rousing rally at Ritter. Moments before the men's hockey team hit the road to Detroit, Hundreds of fans gathered in the Ritter Arena to wish them good luck. It's, it's all about support. Um, unfortunately, not everyone uh, that can fit in this arena will be going to Detroit. So it's always important to um, show as much support as you can and get as many people out here as possible. Yeah, I mean, it's just important that we show some love to the team that's uh, been so great all year long. I mean, giving us a great show all year long and just you know, figured the best, the best I could do is come out and uh, show some love back. President Dessler, along with Mayor Bob Duffy and County Executive Maggie Brooks, were just a few of the guest speakers who came to acknowledge the team's accomplishments. Well, well, I know you're all having fun here, but I want to tell you there's a frenzy in the Monroe County community as well because everybody's extremely energized and absolutely proud of this RIT team. I am so proud to be an alum of this school, but RIT is not only a great school, it has the best hockey team in the country. And it will be, no doubt, the first national championship coming back to Rochester. There will be many more accolades when they come home, but I want to wish them all the very best. What, what a great moment for you guys and your families uh, to enjoy this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience to go out and do that. And I just want to also add, as I'm in the back row, Joe Morelli, Joe Robach, and Joe Rigo were just whispering, if the Tigers win, they will personally fund a brand new arena right here at RIT. So, a new rink was not the only surprise they announced to commemorate this milestone. This goes on to talk about the incredible history of this team, the accomplishments to date, but it also sends best wishes for the next milestone, which we know they will be successful in achieving. And on behalf of the mayor and myself, we proclaim today RIT Tiger Hockey Day in Rochester and Monroe County. How do you think the fan sport has changed over the years, especially to this year? I think it's been interesting. Over the years, we've always had a lot of people that are staples, that come all the time, and they're regular people that have come for years and years and years. Now we're seeing more and more people uh, like the excitement. Um, I definitely think it's added pride, and I think in future hockey seasons, hockey is going to be a huge thing. Like I've always been a fan since I've been here, but I think a lot of the other camp people on campus didn't realize how big it was and how good our team was. So. Um, I think it's bringing in a lot of school spirit and a lot of recognition to RIT. The Frozen Four marks a homecoming for two Tigers. Sophomore Scott Knowles grew up just 15 minutes from Ford Field in Windsor, Ontario. On the other hand, sophomore Cameron Burt grew up right here in the heart of Hockey Town. I caught up with a very proud Burt family in Southfield, Michigan. While all of Detroit was anxiously awaiting the arrival of Cameron Burt at the Frozen Four, his family knew that playing hockey would be his main focus on the trip. His, his thing is I'm not coming home 
to see friends and, and family. I'm coming to play this game. I just want them to go out and don't think about us, don't think about cameras, don't think about who might be watching you, what scouts might be watching. Just play your game. Just play. On Thursday night, what sort of emotions are going to be going through you guys when you watch Cameron skate out into Ford Field? I'm not going to cry, but I'll, I'll be immensely happy and, and, of course, proud. We're both really proud of Cameron. We know the sacrifices that he's made and some of the risks that he took. And so, you know, I'm going to be screaming my head off. <laughs> my heart's with him, you know, my love. You know, I think about all the, the steps it's taken to get here, and, you know, I can't say I'm not going to cry, so. <laughs> One of the influences in Cameron's life who's helped him on the road to success has been his big brother, Brandon. I think he makes Cameron what he is, competitive. You know, Cameron didn't really have a lot of kids his age, so he played with his brother and his brother's friends, and they didn't give him any slack. So, you know, he, he became fiercely competitive that way. They have an extremely good relationship. Brandon, in fact, urged me to move Cameron to a little bit more competitive program than he was in. And, you know, he says, Mama, he could be really good. You just got to let him go. And I wasn't sure, but his brother just really worked on me. And um, he's always been very supportive of Cameron. In his past two seasons at RIT, Cameron's acquired even more support from Tiger hockey fans, who coined the now infamous phrase, Bert brings the hurt. I love that <laughs> saying. I just love it. When they start chanting, I'm the loudest one. <laughs> well, you know, last year when I went to the games, and uh, it kind of tickled me to, uh, to hear it going on. You know, it's kind of endearing, I think, you know, that the fans had taken to him so well and, you know, he, he was giving everything he could to show that, that he wanted and belonged there. I thought that was great. To go um, to that arena and almost not get a seat if I get there too late and then to just hear that, I just think it's so rewarding because mm -hmm. I can remember the games when, you, you know, there was nobody there cheering him on, right. you know, other than his family and mm -hmm. so that's yeah, really cool. As Cameron's family looks to the future, they see no regrets from the past and are looking forward to the years to come. He said his ride, and I don't think it's over. I don't think it's over at all. This is just, you know, one spot on the map, and he's going to keep going. Sports Zone continues now from the Frozen Four here in Detroit, where game day finally arrived as the Tigers put the nation's longest winning streak on the line against six-time NCAA national champion, Wisconsin. The Tigers playing at Ford Field in front of a record crowd of over 34,000. First period, things did not start well for Wayne Wilson's club. Less than two minutes in, Wisconsin with pressure in front, and John Mitchell puts the rebound past Jared DeMichael. It was 1-0 Badgers. Later in the period, Ryan McDonough with the deflection for the goal. It was 2-0 Badgers just like that, and Wisconsin would not let up. They advanced easily with an 8-1 victory over RIT. The Tigers were outshot 37-14, a season low for shots by RIT. Penalties also killed the Tigers. The Badgers went 3-7 for seven with the man advantage. With more on the loss and the end of an amazing season, here's Sophie Shalasi. RIT had yet to trail in goals this postseason, but all it took was a minute 27 for Wisconsin to take the lead and route to a seven goal victory over the Tigers, the largest margin of defeat in RIT Division I history. They had an answer for everything. They were just uh, physically, uh, I thought, stronger and quicker and, and uh, it really answered anything that we tried to generate. Um, I'm very frustrated, uh, not only that we lost, but just that, you know, these seniors don't get a chance to put on an RIT jersey again. Uh, they've given everything they had this year and they're all four years to this team. And, and it's really a shame that we couldn't come out with a win and, and let them play another game. But, I mean, whenever you lose a game of this magnitude, it's hard to handle, you know, guys in the locker room, you know, you don't want to take your gear off because you know you're not going to put it on again. I don't want them to take it for granted. I'm sure uh, a number of years from now, uh, they won't, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think it put uh, RIT in the spotlight, and uh, I'm very, very proud of, uh, 
of, of our year and of our team, and, and this game will not diminish any of it. Personally, I'm just more upset that it's all over with. Um, but at the same time, I know our team, we hate losing. Um, I mean, that's a, I think that's a reflection of our record. We have a ton of wins, and our team's battled back from a lot of adversity, and uh, I think we proved to a lot, a lot of people that we opened some eyes and that we can play the game. Um, I think there's a bright future at RIT. It's a season these Tigers and RIT hockey fans won't soon forget. A defining moment just five seasons after joining Division I hockey. The program unexpectedly jumped into the national spotlight and now hopes to become a regular in the years to come. With RIT Sports Zone at the Frozen Four in Detroit, I'm Sophie Schlacey. When news broke that the Tigers were headed to Detroit for the Frozen Four, plans were already in motion to give the loyal fans at home an RIT hockey experience they'd never forget. What do you think about the turnout? 1,200 fans can't be wrong. We're packed in here, just a sea of orange. It's really unbelievable. I mean, I don't, I don't think I've seen a gathering like this at RIT in my brief time here, that's for sure. How does it compare to the Super Bowl turnout? Oh, there's no comparison. While many had hoped to make the trip to the big game, things didn't quite play out that way. Got no money. <laughs> that's, that's what it came down to. It was like, go in debt or, yeah. You know, being a college student, not a lot of money, and I uh, was worried about hitchhiking out there. I did consider it, though. I considered it, but the problem was just schoolwork and certain things just got in the way. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. So why did you choose to come to the Gordon Field House? Why watch it alone in your room when you can watch it with a whole bunch of fans? Exactly. It's a community. It's RIT. The Tigers NCAA playoff run caught the attention of not only the RIT community, but all of Rochester. There are so many people here just like from the community. I mean like families are here and like all around the country like my friends at other schools are like I'm watching the hockey game like go Tigers and it's just so great. <laughs> I mean I think a lot more people coming out to see the events a lot of more people coming out to see not just hockey but they're coming to see basketball games and you know other and soccer games so I think it's turned out great all around. When somebody sees you in an orange shirt they know now that you're not from Syracuse you're probably from RIT. Although this year's team will now pass into the annals of history They've certainly left their peers with a season to remember for years to come. I'm a big sports fan and hockey. I never watched it much before, but man, now it's one of my favorites. I need to go get a jersey as soon as they get the sizes back. They're all out right now. I came in here. I didn't really know much about hockey. didn't really care too much for it. Went to my first game over in Ritter, and, well, this has been absolutely hooked ever since. It's just another reason to come to RIT. Well, it certainly was an amazing and unbelievable season for the RIT Tigers. Now, if you missed any of our coverage on the road to the Frozen Four, you can see it all now at RITSC.com. Thank you so much for watching this very special edition of RIT Sports Zone. We leave you now from Detroit with a look back at the Tigers' magical season. The Tigers begin the season in front of the largest home crowd in RIT's history. 7,421 fans filled the stands of the Blue Cross Arena on Brick City weekend. Buzzer Burton winding up the shot, and Todd's going to run out on the Tigers. It's definitely frustrating, leaves a bitter taste in our mouths that we should have buried the puck and should have won. But uh, hopefully over time we figure out how to put that puck in the back of the net. I think in order to, to win something, it, it's, it's a lot of effort, a lot of hard work, and. Our players realize that and they do that. Uh, they work very, very hard for everything they've achieved and I know that if they don't, then they're probably going to lose the game. Go! Hockey stay right on him! Yeah. Win the period. No friendlies. Get everyone involved here and be strong in the finisher. Let's go now. Let's finish the job. Yeah. There's an opportunity. Babbitt walking in. Great defensive play by Sellers from behind a poke check and one away. Goal! Goal! Maisie! Maisie! The Tigers are the regular season champions of Atlantic Hockey! Fantastic. Today, the left wing won the game in overtime. How did you feel about that? Oh, you know, relieving. I had a couple chances in the third there I should have buried, but I didn't get it done, so... Got to get her done at home in front of the home crowd and from a packed house, pretty special. Our RIT Tigers took center stage for the first time ever in the Atlantic Hockey Finals.
All this stood in their way of the conference championship with the familiar faces of the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Five seconds to go. Celebrate RIT, celebrate Rochester, New York. The Tigers, for the first time, are going to the NCAA tournament. You heard the place in here after we won. It was, it was pretty loud and everyone's real excited. So, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they know that we're on the map and we know that we're a good team, but hopefully we can make some more noise in the tournament. Zone backhands in front, slots up by Murphy. No rebound. Score! Stephen Maddock, the Cinderella story of the tournament so far. The Rochester Institute of Technology out of Rochester, New York. They're going dancing to the Frozen Four in Detroit. Expected this. this is I mean, I'm not a loss of words. We don't think about underdog, overdog. I mean, you can call us Snoop Dogg. We really could care last thing. RIT taking on Wisconsin. Now we're racing the other way. Bendixson again in drags it. And it gets the bucket and scores. Badgers just trying to run it out as they send it around the boards. Congratulations, Wisconsin. I think it put uh, RIT in the spotlight, and uh, I'm very, very proud of, uh, of, of our year and of our team, and, and this game will not diminish any of it.